Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Acid Spitting Emu, and welcome back to Joe Divers Lone Wolf. Now, last time we had rescued uh, Leona, Leandra's father, and uh, she had said that she had something she needed to tell us, something that was important, so we need to go see what she's hiding. Leandra speaks in a subdued voice. The Gaiax have something of mine that must not fall into the hands of the Dark Lords. I... I invented and built an engine myself. Leandra glances at her father, hesitantly, before she continues. It's much smaller, safer, and more powerful than any of my father's machines. While working in the western part of the forest, the miners found themselves in an old Shianti chamber. I found the crystal there. My engine harnesses its energy in a way that I would not have believed possible. Jen's eyes widen and he struggles to draw breath. Leandra, the relics of the Shianti are cursed, he gasps. No good will come from using them. You promised me you wouldn't. I'm sorry, Father. I love you dearly, but I will not be held back by old superstitions. My prototype engine will change all our lives for the better. I am an inventor, too, and a very good one. Will you never give me any credit for my work? And now the Gaiax have it. I'll credit you that, scoffs Jen. And when their Dark Lord Masters receive it, how will it change our lives for the better then? Jen struggles to contain his anger. I know very well the thrill of discovery, but this is just selfish pride. In Ishar's, in Ishar's name, how did you lose it? I hoped I would find the prototype here among the loot, but my hopes were misplaced. I had the device in my possession in Rockstarn, but I dropped it when I was running from the Gaiax. I saw them retrieving it and handing it over to the Dracarim. This was before our mighty Frey Earl swept in to save the day. My lord, it is you, he says, and salutes you respectfully. His deference to your rank is very different from the recognition you received from his daughter at your first meeting. It is clear, however, that Jen is determined to get the whole picture about the attack. With a frown, he says, My lord, the enemy must have known about my daughter's work, yet it seems they didn't know about her or they wouldn't have come looking for me. Leandra now fully realizes the consequences of her action, and tears begin to well in her eyes. She stands in awkward silence, staring at the snowy ground. Jen continues, Now that Leandra's engine is in enemy hands, may Kai and Isher have mercy on us all. They will take it to the Batog, of that I'm sure. That accursed tower is perched on the cliff's edge on the far northern side of the sunken forest. Leandra finds her voice and gives you a few quiet words of advice. To reach Vitog, you'll need to cross a great chasm. It divides the sunken forest near its center. There are two ways I know to cross the chasm, but we can discuss this later. Now I need to take my father somewhere that is safe. We must go back to the mines. Your keen ears hear the distinctive sound of Dracarim approaching the encampment. You tell Leandra to assist her father and make good an escape while they still can. Leandra helps her father to his feet and supports his weight. Go as quickly as you can, you say, and may Isher's light guide your way. Moments after they disappear among the trees, a war party of Dracarim enters the encampment area. They see the bodies of their slain comrades, and they come rushing forwards with their weapons drawn. They are hungry for revenge. Alright, we can charge at the Dracarim to cover Leandra and Jen's escape. We can disrupt the Dracarim's assault with a powerful mind blast attack. Or we can draw the Dracarim further into the camp and try to slow them down. Let's take them head on. You decide that attack is your best form of defense in this situation. You steal your nerve and raise your weapon above above your head before you give vent to your battle cry and run headlong into the attacking Dracarim. All right, we know we have a tough one ahead of us here. At least one Dracarim, probably two or three. Possibly even a higher level Dracar, uh, Dr uh, Dracar. Okay, we have two lower level ones here. I mean, but even lower level Dracar are pretty tough. 
go. Yeah, let's see if I can't finish him off here. Yes, alright, there's one down. But I am almost completely out of stamina. So let's go on up. Oh, I'm out of crossbow bolts as well. Shoot. Uh, let's go with this. Alright, at least do that. Get one good attack in on him. We don't have the mana to do this. But we can go ahead and hit him with a mind blast as well. Alright. Maybe stun him. Hopefully. Yes, he is stunned. So we should be able to recover. Alright. Uh, there we go. We'll go ahead and hit him with a power attack. Yeah, alright. Now let's see. Was that all or do we have another one? That was it. Alright. So that should have allowed Jin and Leandra to escape. see what manner of loot they left us. Alright, four superior throwing knives, a hacker, which we just bought, <laughs> and uh, a lamsper tincture. Very nice, we'll go ahead and take all that. Having defeated the Drakarim, you pause for a few moments to scour the surrounding trees for signs of other enemies. The dark forest echoes with strange noises. Some are close, some are distant. You detect the noise of Drakarim and Gaiax moving through the trees, and you also hear the sound of loot wagons being hauled across now or snow covered trails. In order to avoid running foul of them, you'll need to find a high vent uh, vantage point where you can determine precisely where the enemy units are located. You are about to leave the encampment when another sound demands your attention. From out of the surrounding trees, the wolf pack emerges, led by the old male with a distinctive patch of white fur in the center of his forehead. You stare into its amber, amber eyes and immediately it knows your intentions. With its snout, the pack leader indicates towards the distance. The wolf then moves calmly in this direction. As he goes, he turns and looks at you again. You smile at him and nod your head in acknowledgement. You are grateful for his help. Alright, let's see if we can meditate here. You sense that it's dangerous to meditate here, yet it might be worse. So we're pretty much guaranteed to get into a battle here as opposed to meditating. Ah, we made it! Alright. That's great. Alright, let's go ahead and head down here. and write our story from here. You join the wolf pack and run with them through the dense timberland. At length, you arrive at the base of a, a monumental oak that rises solitarily above the pine tops. Its massive trunk ascends into the dark sky, providing the promise of a useful observation point. Using your exceptional agility, you climb with ease to the top of the tall tree and look down upon the forest below. Bathed in moonlight, several new geographical features of the sunken forest are revealed to you. You take note of these features before you descend the tree and return to the wolf pack gathered at its base. You thank the wolf pack leader for his valuable help. With a slow bink, a blink of his amber eyes, he acknowledges your thanks. Then he lopes away into the forest with his pack following closely in his wake. Alright, we have a location there we can visit. We have a location down there we can visit. And another location over here we can visit. And we could go back to the mines to check on uh, Jin and Leandra. But I think first, I want to go over here. Come on. Over here. There we go. You enter a clearing where the ragged remnants of a small tinted encampment lie strewn across the frosty, uneven ground. 
Amongst the torn debris, you count half a dozen lifeless bodies, all human. There appears to be only one survivor and you recognize him immediately. It is Merak Gilad, the outlaw leader whom you released from a prison cell below the sheriff's office in Rockstorn. Merak is gathering the frozen corpses of his companions and placing them alongside the edge of a small pit. He hears you approach and swiftly he draws, draws a long bladed knife from his belt. But as soon as he recognizes you, he sheathes the knife and beckons you towards the pit. The wild enthusiasm you had seen in him when he escaped the gal is now evaporated. It was utterly destroyed when he found the bodies of his murdered companions. They put up a desperate fight, yet the sight that befalls you now is grim. It reminds you of the ultimate price paid by the innocent villagers of Rockstarn, and you vow to avenge their needless deaths. You help Mirok to place the corpse into the corpses into the pit, and as you carry out this grisly duty, he tells you what has happened to him since you freed him from the Gal cell. He was able to avoid the enemy raiders in Rockstarn and, es and escape the village. His immediate concern was to pull as much distance between him and the Gaiax. Was to put as much distance between him and the Gaiax. Okay. He found a narrow trail that descended the cliff and decided to try his luck. When he describes the steep cliff trail, you realize that it must be the same way that was used by the Durncrag wolves you observed from the elevator. The descent slow and perilous. It took Merok many hours to make his way back safely to his encampment where, to his horror, he discovered that a deadly enemy attack had caught his men off guard. Half of his outlaw band was killed in combat and the remainder fled into the surrounding trees. He has since been able to find and rally them in the forest less than a mile from their ruined camp. They are waiting there now for him to return and tell, tell them if the, for, clo, if the coast is clear. Merak can barely contain the anger that is welling up inside him. As soon as the last body is laid to rest, he vows to take his revenge on the enemy that has slaughtered his companions. He thanks you for your help, and then he turns away from the, fit, from the pit. Fueled by a burning hatred of the enemy, he sets off to fetch the few survivors of his brotherhood who are waiting for him in the forest. He vows to return to help you fight and destroy the murdering Gaiax and their evil masters. As you search the camp, you notice a patch of snow-sprinkled ground that is unusually springy. It sags a little under your weight as you walk across it. A shovel lies nearby and you use it to scrape away the surface snow, revealing several flat planks of wood laid over the pit. A pit contains the pit contains the cache of various provisions. The enemy would find such loot highly desirable. It is only a matter of time before another war party party comes this way to search the ruined encampment. You can hear many footfalls echoing through the surrounding trees, and you know it is only a matter of minutes before they arrive. With this imminent threat foremost in your mind, you check your weapons and equipment and steal yourself for their appearance. You are determined not to be caught off guard, as were Merok's companions. All right, <clears throat> an outlaw's dog has survived. You help it, you help it resort, resorting to the discipline of healing. You look for cover and prepare for the upcoming fight. You get ready to engage the enemy with a ranged attack, or you don't master this discipline. Let's help the dog. You hear the yelping of a wounded dog. Drawn by the plaintive cries, you scour the forest and glimpse it running through the trees. It is, it is a Torinese hunting hound, and it's pining for its dead master, who is one of the outlaws of the Brotherhood. It is bleeding from wounds to its shoulders and back. You summon your powers and project them at the injured hound to ease its pain of its wounds. <clears throat> its strength and vigor return, and so too does its courage and tenacity. It turns about and leaps at the throat of a Gaiac that has been chasing hot on its heels. It deals the Gaiac a nasty wound before hurtling itself bravely at another Gaiac that emerges from the trees nearby with its sword drawn. It savages the creature's face before the Gaiac deals a swift and fatal blow. The hunting dogs... Oh, I missed something. Hold on. Ah, the two... The two Gaiacs are left bloodied by the hunting dog's tenacious attack. They are only the first of several enemy troops that are now closing in upon the ruined encampment. Well, let's make them pay for the life of that dog and the life of all of those uh, 
Brotherhood members. They should come in wounded, I believe. Oh, this actually sounds like a, uh... Almost like a boss battle type music. Three Gaiax. Should be able to take one out right here. Easily enough. And we'll take another one out right here. Alright. Now that leaves us a little bit of stamina, so let's go ahead and... Um... I still don't have any throwing daggers. I thought I got some. Okay, well, that's fine. We'll just go ahead and read his next move. Hit him again. There we go. And now we wait. Looks like he's bleeding, so that's pretty nice. Or he was, anyway. Deal a little bit of damage to us, but nothing major. And we'll just finish him off with a weak attack. Alright, what else? Anything else? Yep, we have a big Drakkar. And some more Gaiax. Okay. So this just got interesting. Let's go ahead and use the Summer Squared. Maybe take out the two Gaiax in a hurry. Come on, come on. Yes. Come on, I know I hit that. Damn it. Alright, well, it hurt the Gaiax anyway, so that's fine. Let's see if we can't deal some more damage to this Drakkar. Alright. And anything else I can do? I don't think so. I think I'm completely out of everything that I could do. So let's go ahead and use this real quick. That should finish him off, and it'll damage them. Uh, it didn't finish him off, but he is burning, so he should die pretty quick. Now they all ought to die from the looks of it. Alright, there's the Drakkar. And one Gaiac down. And the other Gaiac down. I love those bombs, guys. Those are immensely helpful. Um, if you're playing along this game with me here, uh, it might not be a bad idea at this time to uh, head on back to uh, your nearest merchant and buy you a few of them if you don't have any because they really, really are handy. Alright, let's see what they left us. We have some regular throwing knives, leather, silver necklace, pine, some coins, and some superior crossbow bolts. We do not have enough room in our inventory, however, so let's see. What can we leave behind here? Or what can we use to restore ourselves? What do I have? Okay, this is plus one intelligent, plus one to critic. And yeah, we'll keep that one on. The Hakkar is good to sell. What does this do? Yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll eat this. That'll get our Kai power up pretty good. The Larnuma bread. We'll go ahead and eat that. That'll fill us up. And what does this do? Ah, right. Alright. Yeah, we're good anyway, so let's go on and take the rest of the treasure here. Soon after the fight, a party of Brotherhood scouts appear. They are part of a larger group of outlaws hidden, des hidden deeper in the woods. These scouts have been sent to assess the strength of the enemy prior to a planned retaliatory attack. The scouts are greatly impressed that you have slain the enemy patrol that attacked their camp and, ki and killed their comrades, even though they have been denied the satisfaction of taking their revenge at first hand. The outlaws already know of you. Merak was able to return to their forest lair and tell them the details of his release from Rockstar and Gal. This action, together with your thoughtful treatment of their slain comrades, has earned you their deep respect. They are eager to help you as generously as they can. There are supplies they can sell you, and they are able to help you with your equipment. 
Alright, so, we have a merchant right here. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, let's go ahead and talk to them, see what they sell. Now, this merchant here sells some even higher level stuff, so that's pretty nice. Uh, you can see they have the Smitor, the Hakar, and the Adjudicar. Uh, they have the superior knife scabbard, which is very nice. Uh, it gives you plus two intelligence, and I believe it actually holds more knives. Um, plus, they have all the way down to a full grain leather satchel. And they sell, uh, let's see, yeah, they sell the tainted and explosive bolts, which are pretty nice if you're using the crossbow. Uh, I'm just choosing to use the knives in this playthrough, so... But they also sell, most importantly, all the way up to King's Leather, all the way up to um, Desi Walnut, Hardened Bronin. So uh, if you need any of that, this is where you need to come to get it. <clears throat> but what I want to do right now is I want to get uh, all this stuff that I have in my inventory that I don't need out of my inventory. So we'll go ahead and sell all of this let's see sell the explosive bolts because I don't need those like I said I'm not using the crossbows so <clears throat> I can sell this other hacker because I don't need it either although I could dual wield axes but yeah it's not really important uh, let's see I'm going to go ahead and sell this, because I'm probably never going to use it. And sell the superior crossbow bolts. Alright, anything else we need to sell here? Uh, I don't see anything, so let's go to our stash. And now, stash is shared uh, throughout the entire game here. Every stash is shared, so... You can go ahead and you can store whatever you need to store in your stash. I have tons of crossbow bolt or tons of pick locks, so I'm gonna go ahead and store the extra one down here. Let's see. Oh, I can sell this ring as well. I forgot about that. We'll go ahead and we'll store this. The stash is best used for storing your crafting items because you can still do all of your upgrading and everything, even from the stash even if it's not in your inventory, so let's go ahead and go back to sell. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, sell this silver ring here. And we'll go up and we will sell the silver necklace. Alright, now let's see what we can upgrade. Uh, we have the knife scabbard. How much money do we have? 721. Alright, I do want to go ahead and buy the superior knife scabbard. Yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll buy that. And it should auto-equip, I believe. So we should see it in here. Yes, we see it right here. So that's pretty nice. And uh, now we can also sell our standard knife scabbard. Now there's the superior knife scabbard. Ah, right, we still have to go to our inventory and with it. I forgot about that. And that's also why the superior throwing knives were not equipped, I believe, is because we did not have the superior knife scabbard. Let's see, that is just the knife scabbard. That is the superior knife scabbard, so we'll go ahead and drop that up there. And I guess we can't actually equip them. Okay, that's fine. But now, we can go back to the merchant here and we can sell our standard knife scabbard because our superior knife scabbard is better you see we have the superior let's see our knife scabbard gives us now keep in mind as well it's upgraded twice so it actually oh dang it it actually gives you plus three dexterity Whereas the superior knife scabbard, which I can't even go on, 
because uh, I have it equipped. But it gives you, I think only right now, plus one or plus two dexterity. But you can still upgrade it. So, I want to go ahead and sell this. And I want to see about upgrading that and upgrading my uh, Kai Mail to its highest level. Let's see. I already have everything I need. Yeah, intelligence, that's what it is. That'll boost me up to plus three intelligence. So I want to go ahead and do that. And then to do it again, I would need three more superior leather. So let's head on back here. And I want to see what I need for the Kai Mail armor first. I need three king's leather, five hardened bronin, and three bronin. So let's see how much that'll cost us. It's going to be pretty expensive, but I believe we can do it. So, three king's leather. Uh, let's see. Five hardened bronin. Which, this is going to be very expensive. Yeah, we're not going to have enough. We're not even going to have enough to do the full thing here. Alright, so we'll just buy one bronin. And that should get us set up to where next time we can go ahead and upgrade our uh see if we have anything to sell just to make sure I could go ahead and sell this but I kind of like that yeah we'll, we'll go ahead and get rid of it I'm probably not going to use it anyway and anything else the elixir of Oade oh wait that's to buy back uh, let's see, anything else? Um, I could sell the Lomspur oil, but I kind of want to keep it around. I could also sell the regular throwing knives, I guess. Let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and sell the Lomspur oil. That should give us... Enough to buy one more Bronin here. And upgrade our Kai armor to the highest level. There we go. And that leaves us with 142. I believe that's just enough. Just over enough. Nope, we need 208. Shoot. And we still need another Bronin as well. Wow. Yeah, it's very expensive, but it is very worth it. Uh, add slots to your... Um... Go ahead and get another one of those. Alright, yeah, it adds slots to your inventory, so you can carry more. That's always handy. And uh, it adds to your defense, and I believe when you upgrade it, it gives you... Let's see, right now we have 200 and plus 250 Kai and plus 150 Endurance with Armor of 8. If we upgrade it one more time, it's Armor of 12 with 350, uh, with uh, plus 350 Kai and plus 250 Endurance. So, that's pretty nice. Uh, we're going to have to wait a little while to get the money, but we now do have all the parts. So, I want to go ahead and store all this down in our stash here. this down here all right now we have everything we need so let's head on out now one more thing I do want to do before I end this episode here I do want to head on back to check on Jen and Leandra I want to see if they made it make sure that they made it back safely ah, we ran into a battle along the way now that happens sometimes, it's not a frequent occurrence, at least not as far as in how far I've played the game, but it does sometimes happen that you run into a battle along the way to your goal, so. And the further you're trying to travel, the more likely it is to happen. Now a couple of Drakkar, shouldn't be too big of a problem, well until they got me bleeding. 
Alright, let's go ahead. Take one of these bad boys out. One more hit. Oh, come on. There we go. Alright, he's done for. Now I want to save what stamina I've got left here, so let's go ahead and use this. Building our stamina. There we go. I believe he'll stay stunned long enough for me to get my next turn. There we go. Now I should be able to finish him off with this. Alright. If they give us enough coins here, or enough stuff that we can sell for a decent price, we might be able to go ahead and do our mail. Let's see what we got. Or upgrade our armor, I should say. Elixir of Adgana, which is pretty nice. See what this does. Increases strength by 35 for 10 seconds. Cures bleeding and hemorrhage. Can only be used in combat. But it sells for a really good price, which is great. So we'll go ahead, plus we got 37 gold crowns. We'll go ahead and we'll, uh take everything here and guys I'm not gonna have time since I had that combat there I'm not gonna have time to make it back to uh, Jen and Leandra this episode we'll go check on them next time but uh, I do hope you enjoyed the video and if you did leave me a like and subscribe but ladies and gentlemen have a wonderful day later